Now, we are going to talk about respiratory system and human being, uh, the most complicated organism, human being, us. We have a complicated respiratory system. We have to conduct metabolic reactions all the time. In every second, many molecules are making in the process of making and many are in the process of breaking. We need all the time oxygen and we have to remove our carbon dioxide. For this, we have a very efficient respiratory system. Now we look at various parts of respiratory system. Uh, what, uh, what parts actually makes our respiratory system? We have mainly lungs. Human beings are mainly the land vertebrates, the mammals. Uh, and uh, human beings have lungs as their major respiratory surface and organ. The human respiratory system consists of lungs and air passageways. Look at the slide. We have lungs as our major respiratory surface. We have air passageways which allows movement of air from the outside through nostrils till lung. We simply name them. Air passageways are in human being starts from nostril, nostrils, then comes the nasal cavity, then comes a tube, a muscular tube, pharynx, then comes another small tube, larynx, which leads into trachea, trachea leads into bronchi, bronchi leads into bronchioles and then comes the alveoli the smallest um, the, the alveoli are the smallest um, parts of the respiratory tract which are present inside the lung from bronchi we and the uh, passageway enters the lung now we look at a diagram to uh, observe various parts look at the diagram in front of you it shows various parts of a human respiratory system First of all, the air have to enter to nostrils in the nose. And there are two nostrils. Air enters to nostrils into the nasal passage. Then there is a muscular tube just behind the throat, which is called pharynx. Pharynx leads into a small box, uh, which is also a sort of a tube, is called larynx. We know that larynx is also called a voice box because our voices which are generated by us are generated by the vibration of uh, certain parts of this voice box or the larynx. But this also acts as a passageway for the air uh, coming through uh, the nasal cavity and pharynx and lead towards the trachea. After larynx, trachea comes. As you can see that trachea have ring-like structures. These rings are actually cartilaginous C-shaped uh, structures. And these help uh, the trachea to not to collapse. Um, then trachea are, is going down to the thoracic cavity or the chest cavity. And then we can see the trachea branch into two. These two branches are called the bronchi. Now closely look at the diagram. Both of the bronchi are entering in the lung. We have two lungs. We can say a pair of lungs. Uh, one on the right and one on the left side of uh, the chest cavity. Trachea divides into two bronchi and one bronchi each enters one lung, one on the right, one on the left. Then we can see that each bronchus, uh, one of the lung is shown from surface on the uh, right and on the left, on the other side, the lung is shown um, in a cuts, in a cross section, in a cut section which shows that each bronchus is divided into further so many branches like that of branches of a, a complex or a very big tree. These branches are called bronchioles. Bronchioles then ends into sacs, spongy sacs. These sacs are called air sacs. Air sacs are the functional unit of lung and air sacs consist of more small structure, microscopic structures, uh, single wall structures called alveoli. So this is about a generalized structure of human air passageways and the lung. Now we look at the structure and function of each part 
of uh, this air passageway and lungs one by one. So, now we are going to talk about structures and functions of various parts of the passageways in human beings and then the lungs, the nose and the nasal cavity. As we know that air has to directly enter inside the nasal cavity through nostrils. Air may have many dust particles, um, maybe some microorganisms, maybe different types of uh, particulate matter. Nasal cavity is structured to handle all these problems. The nasal cavity have a ciliated epithelium. The epithelial lining of the nasal cavity have cilia on its surface. Secondly, this lining is mucoid. The cells of the epithelium secretes mucus. This mucus covers the whole membranous um, uh, surface of this um, nasal cavity. The result is this, that air when passes through the nasal cavity, it is filtered. It's all the dust particles, some microbes even, and some um, other um, uh, dirt, uh, tiny particles. They are trapped in the ciliated epithelium, which is also mucoid. So the dirt particles, particulate matter, some microbes, remains attached to the surface of the nasal cavity due to ciliated epithelium and the mucus. So air which passes through the nasal cavity towards the next part, which is called the pharynx, is warm, filtered, and moist. Then comes the pharynx. Pharynx is a muscular tube. It's a muscular passage. It is also lined with a mucous membrane. The mucous membrane help um, to, we can say, filter and clear up the air a more, a lot more. Um, air moves down the pharynx towards the larynx. Larynx is the next. Larynx provides for the respiratory system, passageway from which the air passes down towards the trachea. The larynx have a ciliated opening. Its opening is also ciliated and mucoid. So air is filtered more. Larynx have some other property as well. Larynx is uh, cartilaginous. It have cartilaginous fibrous materials passing across from one part to another part, uh, which are also called vocal cords. These vocal cords, when they are vibrated by air, help us in uh, producing our voices. So when we speak out, actually these vocal cord help us to produce different types of sounds by vibration of these um, cartilaginous vocal cords. But for respiration, larynx is a ciliated mucoid pathway. So you can observe generally that the air is filtered and um, body, the passageways, the function of the passageways is to filter the air, keep it moist and make it clean, as clean as possible. Because the next part, lungs, in which air has to go, are so delicate and thin and no dirty particles, no larger particles should go inside the lungs. So the passageways are ciliated and mucoid and they clear up and filter air and make it moist. From larynx, air enters into the trachea, a long tube which is actually supported by cartilaginous rings. We should more precisely say that these are C-shaped cartilaginous structures which line almost all the part of the trachea and they actually help trachea to maintain its shape and not to collapse when air is uh, moving up, moving down. Um, this, the trachea is a long tube. It goes um, from uh, larynx, it starts from larynx and ends into a branching, into, into two branches, one towards right and one towards left and these branches are called bronchi. The trachea divides to form bronchi. Bronchi enters into the lung and these uh, bronchi also have the cartilaginous ring-like structures around. They still need to uh, protect themselves from collapsing because air is always going out, coming in. Uh, breathing process as we know is a continuous process, always uh, goes on. And then bronchi enters in, inside the lungs and they are divided further into smaller branches. These smaller branches inside the lungs, when the bronchi enters inside the lungs, they, uh, they divide into smaller branches. 
then these smaller branches reaches a diameter of about 1 mm, 1 millimeter. Then these are called bronchioles. Bronchioles further divides into air sacs. Air sacs don't have any cartilaginous material to support them. They are spongy. Just like that, the bronchioles, them, the, uh, bronchioles themselves um, have irregular cartilaginous plates. Actually, when the trachea divides into bronchus and bronchus divide into uh, further bronchi, the cartilaginous rings um, then um, are, uh, they become irregularly shaped and ultimately they make um, irregularly placed cartilaginous plates at the ends of the bronchus. And the bronchioles um, uh, and uh, then the air sacs uh, don't have this cartilaginous material. Lung have, lung have, um, or the lungs have millions of air sacs in the alveolus. Each air sac um, have actually extensions of its, its, its membrane, which are only single layered. These are called alveolus. The air sacs are, the, are called the functional units of the lung. And alveoli are microscopic structures. These are very small and uh, these are uh, seen under the microscope. Due to presence of these millions of alveoli and the air sacs, the lungs are spongy in nature. As we know that trachea is hard, bronchi are hard because of the presence of the cartilaginous uh, rings, but the lungs uh, consist of so many air sacs and bronchioles and bronchi. The lungs generally are spongy in nature and not the hard structure, soft structure. Look at a diagram. This diagram shows one bronchus, which is um, supported by a cartilaginous ring though, but you can see that at, at the end of the bronchus, these cartilaginous rings are more irregular and uh, they become some irregularly placed plates. When the bronchus is divided into bronchiole, you can observe that there are no cartilaginous rings or plates. And then, when the bronchiole is uh, further divided, into air sac and air sacs extensions the alveoli as you can see in the top left diagram there are no cartilaginous rings these alveoli air sac and bronchioles give the uh, lung its characteristic spongy appearance then observe the next thing from the right side of the bronchiole um, a bronchus a vein is coming down this is actually bringing, this is the pulmonary arteriole and this is bringing deoxygenated blood to the lung from heart. And um, this is making a capillary network around the whole of the air sac and then entering into an, um, a pulmonary um, venule. This pulmonary venule is going up um, and uh, giving oxygenated blood back to the heart. Now as we know, that air enters uh, through the nasal cavity, nostrils to the nasal cavity, to pharynx, to larynx, to trachea, to bronchi, to bronchioles, and to the air sac. So air sacs are filled with air, and um, this, these uh, air sacs are surrounded by lots of, a big network of uh, the capillaries. Now, as um, I previously described, that capillaries have a single layered structure. Capillaries are a single layered structure. They have just an endothelium. And the alveoli are also single layered structure. So, there are just two direct epithelia in contact. Exchange of gases at this surface is very easy to take, take place. And these alveoli in the air sacs actually gives a very large surface area for the exchange of gases. And as we know that every alveolus is surrounded by a capillary network, a very rich capillary network. So it, um, the exchange, uh, the area, the respiratory surface for the exchange of gases is very high. So we have a thin epithelium in contact, two thin epithelia actually in contact, um, and we have very large surface area. So lung is an ideal surface for exchange of the gases. 